In the ocean of Ubuntu-based distributions, people nowadays, me included, frequently refer them as the Debian-based distributions. Sometimes we use the term Ubuntu-based and Debian-based interchangeably. Since I've never used any proper Debian-based Linux before, I decided to try it out, which ended up making me switching all three out of the four laptops at home to it. This is what happened. Currently, I'm working for a company of which staffs are working from home all around the world. This allows me to travel while still working. After getting back to China, I have the need to work in coffee shops a lot while meeting with my girlfriend. I started getting annoyed by carrying my gaming laptop everywhere. This 1.6 kilogram laptop is not super heavy comparing to other gaming laptop, but I just happen to have a five-year-old Asus Windows tablet collecting dust here anyway, which is way lighter. Although it has only 8 gig of RAMs and 7th gen i5 CPU, I decided to see if I can do some work on it. At the time, Fedora has just released the version 35. I fell in love with this distribution from version 34, so it was a no-brainer for me to try it out on this tablet. The installation was smooth as hell, but I was quite confused by the performance. I needed to wait around 1-2 to two seconds when switching between browser and terminal. There are input lags when writing code in VS Code. And I needed to wait for new tabs to be open even though I'm not a kind of guy who always have hundreds of tabs open in the browser. I have only around 5 tabs open in most of my use cases. This has created a lot of pauses during my work. My thoughts cannot be continuously concentrated on coding. On the other hand, despite of the speed, I found that the touchscreen support is quite useful for a tablet like this. GNOME definitely has a better gesture support for touchscreens than the XFCE in MX Linux. With some slow working progress on Fedora after my first afternoon, I decided to look somewhere else. I realized at the time that because of my previous companies, I had no freedom of choosing distribution for work. Ubuntu was the one and only distribution I was allowed to use before joining my current company. This was because the IT department in those companies only had enough resources to modify the Ubuntu LTS to comply with their network security policy. They are also not very friendly to Linux users who want to try out other distributions and willing to do the configurations themselves. <sighs> and we Linux users are treated like secondary citizens even in those big tech companies when it comes to internal tool support. A small reflection of the sad reality everywhere. Now, back to the process of my distribution picking. I've tried a lot of Ubuntu-based distributions, Mint, Pop! OS, Zorin, Elementary, and Neo, but never have I got the chance to try a pure Debian-based Linux. I knew MX has been the king on DistroWatch website for several years, but I have never used it for more than a day, so I downloaded it and installed it on the tablet. The result is astonishing. I'm not very good at content switching. I like to have blocks of times throughout the day to be able to concentrate and finish my tasks. I do the same for work. I can get into the flow rather quickly if there's no distraction. I was totally lost in work the first two hours after starting using MX Linux because there was no lagging anywhere to distract me. I was shocked after I finished some coding on the tablet because I didn't realize I was working on a low-end machine until I tried to start the web service on it. I didn't notice any performance lag compared to my gaming laptop all the way until then. Application switching, tab opening, and IDE are super smooth. I didn't even realize any speed issue during the code compilation. This is a mind-blowing experience for me. So after two months, I'm still running IMAX Linux on this tablet as an out-of-home working distribution. After forcing my father to start using Linux Mint, we found that everything works well but the video playback on websites. I noticed there are a lot of lags when playing content. My father didn't notice until I pointed out because he likes to pause the video a lot in order to read the subtitles. I was worrying that it was because of the codex compatibility. I installed Mint 
on my low-end tablet and try it out on the same TV using HDMI on the same website. No lagging is fine for the same setup. I had a hunch that it may due to the old hardware on his laptop. Since I was dedicated to make at least one person to like using Linux and my father was my first potential victim, I started to think about the solution. With the optimum experience on MX Linux, I started to have the idea of replacing Mint with MX for him. Because the main purpose of his laptop is to watch video online. Codex is the most important feature for him. After browsing through the settings menu, I saw the option to install Codex in MX Tools, so I decided to give it a go. Again, without any hiccup, the installation finished within 10 minutes. I immediately installed Codex with Chromium and tried it out. Video playback is smooth as it should be. I watched 2 hour Formula 1 race without any lags. Here is the qualifying playing on Mint, and here is the actual race playing on MX Linux. No video effect added. Both my father and I were pretty happy with the results so far, but another issue came on my main laptop. I was working on the video of Void Linux on this laptop back then, and as I mentioned in that video, I needed to have systemd to update DNS records with OpenVPN and Network Manager. I couldn't figure out how to do it without systemd in Void Linux. I know MX Linux does not have systemd enabled by default either, but I was lucky enough to find their official VPN support document. I was able to connect to my company's VPN with ease on the tablet by going to advanced menu in Grub and boot the system with systemd. This feature, along with the optimized performance, made me decide to install MX Linux in a virtual machine on Void Linux just for work until I could finish that video. And now I have finally swapped my main machine to MX. Here, I want to give some praise to MX Tools. It is an awesome centralized place for a lot of tweaking tools for this system. I was able to install NVIDIA and Codex in it. I also see people changing the kernel option to boot with systemd by default in the boot option setting. Using the repo manager here, I could change the mirror locations to the fastest ones in China. I don't understand why so many distributions and or desktop environment default the mouse gesture of single clicking to opening the file. Same happens in MX Linux. This can be turned off easily in MX Tools by going to tweak and config options. Before using MX Linux, I was wondering why it can dominate the DistroWatch website for years. I know that this website does not mean everything, but still it is a great achievement to my eyes. After installing it and using it for some time, I realized it is just a simple, lightweight distribution with everything working but not screaming for attention. I like how easy to use it is but I love its humbleness. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.